Hey, 9.9. Good to see you. Or see marks of you in the chat, at least. Um, how are you tonight? I hope well. Uh, tonight's my production stream, and it's going to go in kind of a little different direction tonight. Um, going to be doing some uh, analysis and some looking at Ableton. Um, basically, um, in my performance stream, which I do Saturdays at 1 p.m., uh, this last week I got ready to do this Waiting on the storm. Where is the, where's the storm? I wasn't, we just had, the, we actually had this incredible first day of, of spring here as far as um, 60 degrees, sunny. I mean, it was a gorgeous day here. Um, so we are, we're going to get a bunch of rain here like we usually do, you know, probably tomorrow, but um, it's a beautiful day here. So yeah. What, uh, Where's the, where's the storm? Um, so while I was playing this piece with Ableton in my regular stream, um, all the way across, wow, big swath. I assume that's Louisiana to, Louisiana to Ohio. Um, uh, and while I was playing it, um, my audio crapped out on me on my live guitar part and um, it hadn't done this when I had rehearsed the piece and that led me to do a little research um, I found out that um, uh, that Ableton on a Mac uses practically um, oh tornadoes man I'm sorry to hear that um, I grew up in Wisconsin and had a lot of, um, uh, grew up with tornadoes, you know, so I, I know the whole routine with tornadoes. Wow. In New Orleans, I hope they're not hit too hard. Um, so, um, found out that Ableton uses like three times the CPU resources as, um, Logic Pro does because, you know, Logic Pro is an Apple product. So when it's running on Macs, it's, really tightly integrated. Um, so if I, I discovered that. And then I discovered, I thought, oh, I should look and see what OBS, you know, the streaming software uses. OBS is an amazing hog on a Mac. Now, you know, it certainly was originally designed for PC. I don't know if that has some, you know, some of it to do with it. Um, OBS, you know, uses a couple of my cores when I'm actually live. I've got a, an eight core machine here. That's an iMac, um, like 40 gigs of RAM. And, you know, it's great for music, but I've been streaming and doing the music all in one machine. And um, so this has led me to um, considering, you know, if I need to switch over to that two PC setup where you literally have one machine dedicated um, and then dedicated streaming and then the other machine you do the music on and you hook them together through a capture device. Um, not complex to pull off necessarily and probably where, what I'm going to have to do. It's the kind of, um, you know, I bought tons of music and studio equipment over the years. And this is the kind that is, I, I enjoy the least buying because it's just not, it's like, it's not like buying an instrument or even a cool, you know, effect box that you're going to make music with. It's just, you know, a bunch of uh, CPU stuff, you know, a bunch of uh, circuit boards that five years from now, you know, software won't run on because they're not fast enough. <laughs> so that's my rant on that. So today um, we're going to do a couple things. Um, we're going to... Um, I'll show you where the activity monitor is on the Mac um, or, you know, where it's at with the current load. We'll look at that. We'll look at the session in Ableton that I use. And w one of the things I did was I, I brought in a lot of my kind of personal plugins that I use for mixing, um, like this. Um, it's a, uh, a Neve console plugin 
that works on every channel. And so I was also going to look at the session if I pulled all those off and kept only the um, Ableton plugins in to see if that kind of um, will make the difference. Um, so, you know, a little this, a little that, a little experimenting. There's also a couple things I found we may look at about optimizing Ableton, though pretty much I think I've hit most of those at this point that I can. Um, so, um, here we go. And, um, this is the, this is the, uh, uh, this is the session, uh, the live session in Ableton that's, uh, got the issue. And you can even look up here and you see the CPU meter up here is kind of writing, you know, peaking at 50%. It's this little wiggling guy up here i also opened up the performance meters on each track you can see my live guitar part which i have the volume on um you know it's got a couple of a couple of pegs on it this one can turn that down actually um and um here is the activity monitor i don't know if how well you guys can read this but um basically um you know i got eight cores um it spreads um like i think we can actually see let me see here yeah this thing will show kind of historical use um what is it 16 two six eight. yeah i'm not quite sure why there's 16 lists there i only have eight cores um but you can see the, the utilization kind of going down by the cores there. Um, on this page, it shows live using 77% core. It shows OP, OPS using 204%. So that's a quarter of the processing in the machine. So it's no wonder that live audio got a little funky. Um, uh, and incidentally, I also this time I tested it OBS when it's idle when I'm not streaming uses a full core about 100% but as soon as I started streaming it it jumped up to to 200 so um you know that's an issue but this is the the figure we want to look at for the moment is this live one which is at 77 um and actually just for my own memory um I'm going to put it in chat because I'm a little tired tonight um I want to be able to make a comparison here. So I'm going to take this live session. Oh, and actually, let's look at one other thing, which is if I play this. Um, yeah, see, playing this bumps live up to 123%. So um, that's kind of our, our, our baseline. Um, sounds like the... Uh, our puppy wants to get in on the on the action here. Um, it's kind of funny, kind of, depending on if you don't mind that sound. Um, let's see, Love Supreme. Did I not save this as a separate? I guess not. I guess I'm, I've got it in here. Well, that's all right. So I'm going to put today's date on this. Um, 322 because we're gonna mess with it here and I didn't want to lose my original oh, that's interesting though it it that was save a copy I, did I have a save as oh yeah I do so let's um let's close this and open up the other uh, open the copy I saved Yeah, open. There we go. Um, 
so so what I've done on these channels, um, uh, Brainworks makes these great plugins through Plugin Alliance, um, which you can play, pay an annual subscription to get. I've got their Mix Master bundle, um, which is like really a sweet bunch of stuff. I mean, you really don't need anything else. This is all the plugins from the Mix Master bundle. But the cool thing is they've um, they've pioneered this uh, um, TMT or tolerance tolerance modeling technology. So like this is their Neve console plugin. And um, when you put these on every channel, um, you're able to, um, these are the channel numbers, you're able to set them each to a different modeled analog channel, which they've modeled the random variations. They actually went in and measured all the analog components, the resistors, you know, the, the things that could actually be different channel to channel in these slight ways. And then this randomizes that so that each channel actually is different the same way it is in a console. And it's very subtle, but I love it. I mean, it really does give the mix this dimension that when everything's exactly the same, you know, you can't get all that. That's really cool. I, I, you know, in my, in my mixes and in Logic Pro, I use it all the time, especially for Twitch because, you know, you can do a lot of EQ compression you know, you can get a lot done here without doing multiple plugins. But I did want to see, um, first of all, about going in here, uh, and my guitar chain is just ridiculous, so there's probably things we could get rid of here. I wanted to see about getting rid of those. Um, and to start, I'm just going to mute them on each channel and uh, see what that does to the to the CPU. And I mean, I kind of like to get rid of them, but then I might want to replace them and we might replace them one by one um, so I can get the settings right. Uh, there it is. So now if we go back to the activity monitor, 72%, 67%. Um, so that's just without um, the Neve console console plugin um, sitting at 66%. Oops, that should have been without. Um, and then if we play it, let's see where that sits. Yeah, much better. So that's coming up to about um, 110%. So just um, just that change without Neve playing 110%. Um, oh, it didn't come down that much, I guess. So we're saving about 10% each time. So I got mixed up. That was OBS that was at 200, I guess. Um, take them out I guess we take them out for the test we can always go back in and so now I'm actually going to delete them uh, see if it brings it down anymore if they're just not even in the chain gone 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 all that nice EQ and uh, compression and all that Secret sauce. I already took that one off. Um, and then we'll look at the activity monitor um, down to 
it only made a 3% difference. And if we play it, I love Supreme. 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 Yeah, so, you know, that brought it down a little more to 103, maybe. Uh, uh, deleting, Neve. Playing. 103%. And then this guitar chain was another area that I just, you know, it's kind of... We probably don't need the Saturn. Like if I was going to be judicious about this, don't need the compressor if we've got the console in there, but we're getting rid of the console. So we'd have to replace that. Um, I think we kind of need these other items. Let's see if that did anything just there. Down to 60%. If we play it now. Love Supreme. Yeah, I mean, at that point, um, uh, we were down in, you know, 90-something, 95% um, simple guitar chain, which would have to be improved. I mean, I, something has to be 93%. Yeah. I was hoping for maybe a little greater improvement from doing this. Um, so last thing I wanted to check was, um, the, um, optimize Mac for Ableton. There were just, uh, you can increase the buffer size, but then you get, um, latency, disable unused inputs, outputs already did that. Turn off the spread function. And, and, you know, this is stuff that's like, um, we're not going to lower sample rate. We're not going to increase the buffer size. We've already done the, the uh, inputs and outputs. Um, you know, they, they do suggest, um, and that this is also something I'm, been having more crashes lately and I'm running Mojave on this Mac. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to go up to Monterey. Um, so I may also do that in this period. Um, uh, Mac, uh, disable automatic graphics switching. Well, that's interesting. Let's see what that is. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Automatic. It's in the energy saver. Let's just go see if energy. Yeah, because we're not a laptop. We don't have that. That's a laptopy, laptopy thing. So we don't have to worry about that one. This is Windows, Windows, Windows. Um, CPU handling of devices, we don't have those. Freezing, I thought of that, I could freeze some of the tracks. Um, I'd rather just get a separate streaming computer than do that. I'm not gonna reduce polyphony. Um, I already use return tracks. Spread function, some of them 
corpus operator and sampler. I only have sampler and I'm not using it in most of these. Um, this is good. Set reverb to echo mode. Y you know, I, I have an electric car. I drive it in echo mode because I don't care about driving fast. You know, I like to kind of use my energy wisely. But as a musician, I would never set my reverb to echo mode. Reverb is, of course, the most beautiful thing in the world, right? And the last thing you want is it to be crappy, you know, to be economic. You want it to be the rich, buttery thing that it is. So, I'm, you know, I'm not willing to do that. Turn off filters and effects. I'm not willing to do that. Um, disable warping. I don't really do warping. Deactivate high Q mode on audio clip. The high Q button. I don't think I'm. Uh, I don't think I've really done that transpose any. Here, you know, I, since I'm streaming on it, I can't do any of that. Um, I've got plenty of disk space. Uh Clean the fans and vents. They're clean. Yeah, it's well. And then upgrade. Yeah. So. That kind of. Um, that tells me that, you know, these changes that I've made here and, you know, possibly if I substituted. Ableton, um, uh, EQ, and compression, that maybe it would be sufficient to squeak by. But this is a, for me, this is a super simple mix. This is, you know, eight tracks, two, four, six, eight. And um, I, I don't want to, I'd rather invest some money in another computer than have this limitation. You know, I'd, I'd rather, um, yeah. The, the other possibility that I am considering, um, and, um, you know, while I know I've got, uh, uh, a low viewer count at the moment. Um, I, I also know that, after the fact um you know a lot of times i have folks come in and listen to this and for those streamers um who are on max um i know that there is um there's a there's a kind of a, a more native to mac option uh, ecam and it's not a free option unlike obs but um it's supposed to integrate really nicely with mac and my bet is that um, it, um, like Logic uses only a third of live, I'll bet that it uses a third of, of OBS. I just, I got a feeling about that. And so I am going to download the, um, the sample on that and try it out. Um, it's not cheap. It's a subscription model, you know, like for the, um, for the pro version. Um, uh, look at that taking a minute to come up. Um, it's around 30 bucks a month. Um, if you're pay for a year and you really kind of want the pro version for the stuff that most streamers do and that I do. Um, so thinking about that, um, you know, OBS is, is, um, the software I use, which, um, for anyone who doesn't know, it looks like this. Um, it's, it's open source so software and, um, it's been around a lot of years and it's been developed very deeply. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's like your, your nerd software. I mean, it was developed on, for PC and there's all sorts of, um, plugins that, you know, people have written for it and, um, 
you know, and, and this other product, product, this eCam is definitely uh, a slicker commercial kind of thing. Um, it does do everything I think I would need at this point. Um, so kind of thinking about that, um, been reading some reviews, you know, on this and, um, it, you know, it seems, oops, that's not where I meant to go. Um, it seems, uh, like a good idea in general, you know, in fact, oh, and the other thing it's even, even works with the new Apple Silicon, the M1 chips, which that's probably what I'd get if I get another computer is a Mac mini with the M1 in it, just like 16 gigs of RAM, because um, apparently the M1 chip with 16 gigs rocks like, you know, 64 gigs on an old machine. Um, I wonder, can we hear what this guy's saying? Is there a reason we're not? Oh, well, that's okay. Um, although we can hear this one probably. That was good. You were on mute. <laughs> That's very good. Um, so you can see, I mean, it's got, you know, it's not just focused. Um, well, let's see. OBS, which I currently use and so many streamers use, it's free. Um, also is used for a whole variety of things. Um, you know, everything from Zoom to corporate kind of things and all that. But this is, you know... This definitely doesn't just say, yeah, you know, just use it to stream music on Twitch or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's definitely, uh, yeah. Um, you know, they got the, the whole scene layout, um, effects, um, green screen. Apparently their green screen is pretty sweet, you know, which, which you can do in OBS, just and it's a little more manual, um, you know, overlays, um, you know, we, we do a chat box. Um, you, you know, you can't do this whole guest business, but, um, and who knows, you know, maybe sometime that could be interesting, but it's, it's not a current, current goal or need. Um, they, it is pretty cool. They have, um, They've built into it the ability to capture from DSLRs, which I figured out how to do it here by loading in some Canon software because I'm going to move over to my DSLR as a camera here soon um, just for picture quality. But um, they've got it kind of built in. And in fact, a lot of times you have to, I was reading, you have to take the Canon software out so you don't get the conflict. 
Um, you know, HDMI capture, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be bringing things over on HDMI from my, from this current computer. Uh, yeah, they've also got apparently some kind of pretty easy use of um, iPhones and iPads as remote cameras, um, which would be cool. Um, you know, widgets, this is, you know, stuff from Streamlabs, Stream Elements, you know, all the stuff that we put on our screens with song lists, that kind of thing. Um, you know, green screen outputs. Um, this is everything you need to, yeah, get out to, to uh, Twitch. Yeah, it'd be interesting if one of these folks was clearly a Twitcher. It could be interesting to watch one of these. Let's just see for a minute. Let's check out Doc Rock. Maybe maybe he's a musician. <laughs> okay, nine point nine, thanks. Uh never used a Mac. Well your your Windows through and through. I you know, I've used I've gone early in my kind of studio music production career it was all Macs. Well, if I go far enough back, it was a Commodore 64. That was uh, quite a while ago. That was my first MIDI sequencer. Then it went into Macs for quite a while. Uh, and then at one point, actually it was as I was kind of finishing up my a lot of my studio stuff, I um, started using Windows machines because it was cheaper. Um and you know build build your own kind of setup um and then a few years ago when i set up this new new space i've got here i decided to kind of because i wanted to break from the professional work i'd done i said I'd go back to mac and switch over from pro tools um into logic pro which has been great and then then you know i, I got into the streaming thing lately and um it's brought in you know these new technical challenges so um kind of figuring that out still um so i don't know you know i look at this and it's so it also i mean in a way it just turns me off because it's so um commercial like what's interesting if you look at the obs site um you know this is about as commercial as it gets and when you go in and start looking at um you know the forum i mean then you're just in a in a nice development forum, you know, with a development section and plugin section, you know, and you've got folks just pages after pages, you know. Um, so, um, yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's Maggie. Our, our puppy, we, we, she's our newest addition and we call her the, the rooster for the times that when she really gets going, it sounds like, it sounds like a rooster. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I think, um, I think I've kind of answered my question here on, um, live, you know, how much improvement I can get. Um, on the activity monitor. Um, although one thing I didn't check, which would be interesting to do, let me close live 
and I'll open up um, uh, one of the maybe more complex um, Logic Pro projects. So I, I don't remember playing at checking for the difference when it was playing, you know. So we'll we'll take a look at um, uh, Nardis is one that's got a few few things going on. I played this a little this morning as I was trying to. Oops, let me pull it over. So I was trying to remember how to play it. Here's that CPU monitor. Um, so this is this sounds like this. Actually, let me go to this middle section. You know, it's got some different sounds, and then it, it, it builds up to this climax with a dog barking in the background. And <laughs> um, dogs outside now. <laughs> yeah, 9.9. .9. Um, so actually that was interesting because it did, um, uh, this one sits at about 52 and when it was playing, it went up to 60. So, um, half live when it was playing was 123. Um, so that, that gives us some idea of the comparison. Um, dogs having a conniption outside now. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's a horse trailer. Oh, yeah. It's a horse trailer next door, I guess. Um, yeah. It, it's interesting. I mean, you'd think, I just feel like, you know, it says 80% idle, right? And if I'm playing, let's um, scoot this over and watch what that idle figure does when I play this. That's actually kind of interesting. I, I want to go look at that idle figure. That stayed at 80% idle, which talk about headroom. I mean, that should be like more than enough to um, accommodate. But we know, of course, it is more than enough um, in Logic because I've had zero problem, you know, streaming in logic so let's just take a look at that same love supreme the original version with all the plugins on it and see where, where that idle number is at we'll let it play for a minute
Yeah, I mean, goodness. I want to hear that. So I had to sp speed that drummer up a little. thing I did notice yeah there's horrible delay going on and I don't think I changed the well, maybe I did maybe I was at 64 before the buffer size let's go down to 64 and see if it takes care of that delay it did and my guess having done that is that this will be worse so now we're at um without playing live yeah we're at at 100 and with playing let's see where it's at
Okay, well, so really, when I got the buffer size set right, um, five went up to 150. So, um, with buffer at uh, 128, what was it set at? Let's go look at that one more time. We'll wrap up here soon too. I'm, I'm kind of toasted tonight, so I'm not gonna drag this out. 64 samples, buffer at 64 samples, which is really the kind of delay you want for live performance. Um, we were up at 100% um, not running, 150% playing. And this is live. Um, but you know what? What's strange about that is this this idle. I'm gonna have to read up on this part because the, the idle stayed, you know, close to that seventy five percent. So I don't really understand that when this is changing that dramatically. Um. Yeah. I think that's all I'm going to do tonight. I, I certainly haven't made a decision about what makes sense. Um, what's really clear, you know, from this, from the activity monitor, where did it go? Bring it back over one more time. What's really clear is this OBS at 200% is taken twice what the audio works taken. I mean, and this machine's got a graphics card and everything. So, that's what would be completely resolved um, with another streaming computer. So, you know, that's kind of the thing, the thing I'm thinking about. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for tonight. Um, thanks, those of you, of you who came. 9.9, .9, thank you for coming. Uh, it's always nice to have you here. Tuesday night's a special, as I've mentioned, I think, never required, you know. Never required, but always nice to have you here. Um, anybody else watching after the fact? Um, my I do a performance stream Saturdays at 1. Um, uh, it's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S., and uh yeah hope you all stay well 9.9 .9, take care of yourself thanks for your support and um i'll see you all soon